reflecting on the moment and the reason why we all have gathered today is to explore um, a theme, a global theme. We call it global because every month, all the Creative Mornings chapters, they explore the same uh, theme in their own perspectives. Um, and for this month, everybody is exploring liminal. And when we had this uh, theme come up, um, I have to admit that one of the first people that came to my mind uh, was, uh, was Ruxandra. And on this occasion, I want to welcome Roxandra on the virtual stage, let's say, of Creative Mornings Cluj. And uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing your morning with us. Good morning and thank you for the invitation. I, okay, logistical. <laughs> Um, how are you feeling today, Ruxandra? I'm curious uh, if you've written in the waterfall chat. Uh, I, I said uh, joy. That was my uh, feeling this morning. Because when I left the house, uh, one of my kids was hugging the dog like the dog was a baby. And I was able to take the time to just enjoy <laughs> that moment. Those small and yet so powerful moments, um, the, I, I fully agree, it's good to have, uh, to appreciate them at maximum. Um, so this edition of Creative Mornings Cluj will be a little bit uh, different. Uh, I will have a small conversation with Ruxandra, but along the way, I want to invite you to feel free to unmute yourselves. And if you have a question or you want to join the conversation, please do. You can do it along the way or uh, you can uh, uh, join in towards the end of the discussion. Um, and talking about coffee, <laughs> uh, I'm really curious, how do you like your coffee? Uh, so <laughs> my coffee is with a lot of milk, <laughs> uh, some coffee and a big pot. Uh, I have a colleague of mine who bought this for me and she said that that's my uh, chorba cup, my soup cup. It's like I'm uh, having soup, but actually it's coffee. So there you go. I also have like a big, big American style mug. <laughs> too. Let's see who has a bigger mug than I have. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> With coffee in the morning. <laughs> exactly. Coffee or green tea or tea, because I'm sure that, um, that we have also some tea lovers among us. Um, and for people who didn't manage to maybe read the description that we shared um, and are, uh, are curious to know who exactly is Ruxandra Mercha, if you can share that with us. Yeah, um, so it's really cool because I'm beginning, uh, I began the week with that question and I'm ending the week with that question. <laughs> um, so five years ago, I wouldn't have uh, uh, been so relaxed about an online uh, talk about uh, what I think and feel. And um, so, as I said on Monday, I am still standing strong uh, Friday with um, I am a woman um, and I need to say that because self-care uh, for me is essential. I am practicing. I am really bad at it many days, uh, but caring for myself as a woman um, and as a person matters. And I'm beginning to see that first. Uh, and then uh, second, I am a mother with a mission. And uh, as I said on Monday, I'm going to still stand strong on Friday is do not mess with a mother with a mission. Uh, so basically, that's my second then role that drives me. Um, and when I see so many young people like yourselves, um, I get more joy and more um, optimism that the, the world uh, the world uh, has a great chance 
of being well for more um, young people uh, and future parents. So that's part of my mission. So we, we identified now, let's say, two fuels for a good day, coffee and joy. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And a mission. <laughs> what and drives you? And I, I wanted to ask you, I mean, what, what, what exactly means to be a mother with a mission? I mean, especially yeah. for us who are not maybe parents yet. Um, so when I uh, graduated the university and I joined education, I knew that what drove me then was uh, to, to build a school that I didn't have. Um, I went out of the educational system being very frustrated and not knowing who I am um, and not being allowed to do stuff that I loved, like volunteering. Uh, those were looked down uh, and to say the least. Okay, I was highly judged uh, if I would have said that I'm volunteering. And um, my mission changed the moment I had the first child um, because yeah, li liminally, the first year of being a mother definitely changes uh, a person. Um, and when my kids struggled, um, I struggled. So um, I think being a mother changes anyone in this world. Uh, and it changes, like they're the greatest lessons that we can have in life. That's what I feel. Um, and I'm not advocating for having children. I am just advocating for uh, being with kids. Okay, if you can volunteer with young people, they have this uh, incredible need of having adults that believe in them. So if you were not, and you did not have that experience growing up as having an adult that truly believed in you, now you can be that adult for young people and kids. Whether no you have pressure. kids or not, <laughs> without pressure, because you get more back than you give. Exactly. And talking about um, giving back and um, the the mission that uh, you you have mentioned in connection with with schools and uh, education. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious from your point of view, how can the school system contribute to the well-being of its students to help them transform and find their way in life? <laughs> um, I think it's um, by every adult um, caring for themselves, for their well-being, and for the well-being of the person next to them. And then this community of adults can truly care about the well-being of kids. As long as we just uh, are in the moment of talking how to teach well-being or anything, and the adults around kids don't practice it and don't leave it, and it's not embedded in their lives, whatever they, we are expecting them to teach, it's just going to be a blah, 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 and we know it. Right? It's the... Uh, we have this Romanian say, um, do what the priest says and not what he does. Well, I think, I think that's bullshit and we know it uh, as such. So I think the adults in the lives of kids need to practice it before and leave it before they ask anything from kids. I, I fully agree with that. Um, and coming back to the... Um, to the global theme that we, we decided to explore today. Um, I'm, I'm curious, um, what, what, how do you see, I mean, when, when you first heard this, this uh, global theme, this invitation of liminal, uh, what was the first thing that uh, you connected it with? That I am there, <laughs> that I am in a liminal state. See the, the vein on my face? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am right now, uh, only, I'm seeing in a fog. Why? Because one of my eyes uh, just uh, uh, gave up on me <laughs> six weeks ago. Oh, no. Uh, but just for now, um, just to give me a sense or a signal uh, that I need to slow down um, and that I am truly in a transition period right now. 
and um, <laughs> you know i i i think and believe that nothing is um without a reason so when this topic came and you said oh i i was like holy moly guacamole if this is not another sign that i just need to admit that i'm in transition <laughs> i don't know what is <laughs> So, so um, that's where I am. Uh, I'm transitioning. Um, and what it means to me is that it goes different places. Um, I, in the last two months, I've seen what my teenage years, um, what I couldn't see from my teenage years. I don't know if sometimes you, you feel that you're not the age. I don't know. I, I had this feeling that I am not the age I am, uh, that I have some experiences yeah. that I haven't grasped yet, and that my age is 17. <laughs> so, I feel yeah. that. <laughs> and how, how would you deal with this? I mean, okay, also, so I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned that I, I also feel that uh, and I also feel that I'm in a liminal space and I'm sure that many people who joined us today, they also feel in a liminal space. Um, so let's say that the first step would be to admit it. I think the first step would be um, to see where you're hurting. Mm -hmm. um, because I was hurting um, in a relationship. And or several relationships in the last <laughs> two months. Um, and I looked there. Um, I think we need guidance. I don't know if this um, emotional uh, awareness and maturity work can be done alone. I think it can be done alone up to a point and then you need guidance. Uh, so either a friend or um, coach or therapist so yes um, I am working with a therapist and she gave me ways to actually see where this was coming from um, and I don't feel 17 anymore I do understand I, I, I feel uh, young in age but not emotionally 17 um, I feel emotionally 37 <laughs> And I'm glad about it. <laughs> but to have the energy of the 17-year-old. Yes, that's completely different. So not to be the emotional teenager in an adult body. Um, Ooh. <laughs> you know what I say? <laughs> talking about energy, um, from where should we get the energy and resources, for example, to... to escape or get out of the liminal space hmm. um what works for me um is <laughs> i take day by day um so i don't set up uh high expectations of being completely clear within the next three months uh so i think we just need to stay with the state whatever state is uh, not give it more power, so not uh, dr dwell on it or spend a lot of time in there, but just know you're in transition, period. Um, acknowledge the loss, because transitioning always comes, or I feel that in my case comes with losses as well as um, fear, as well as anger. Mm -hmm. So be with these emotions, they are completely normal and fine um and what also helps me is to have these anchors of joy i call them so for example there are wednesday wednesday date nights with my husband thursday date night with my family uh massage on saturday so this kind of um things that bring me joy so i know i am refueled and I'm looking forward to those moments in a week. And don't practice and don't please don't put them all at the weekend. You're gonna just screw up with your whole week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we need these joys or anchors of joy 
during the week. And I've noticed that in my case, for example, I was um, in our family, we were seeing our friends on the weekend. I don't know if that happens to you as well. So why? When we were young, we were seeing our friends every day. <laughs> and the moment we become adults and work, work is during the week and we're serious. And in the weekends, we have fun. Like who, who decided that that's the limit or that's something, you know? So just see your friends during the week, um, have lunch, uh, breakfast, whatever. Just have these anchors of joy, not only in the weekend, because life is not in two days, <laughs> it's seven. Even though we wish so much for a weekend to actually be three days, <laughs> maybe yeah. not. But, but we, are, we are screwing with our minds. Exactly. But I loved so much and I wrote down this, this uh, concept of anchors of joy, besides the fact that it sounds so beautiful. Uh, but and even in the chat, we have Alba saying great point to what you're saying. So we feel people connecting with this. And with this uh, occasion, I want to remind you that if you want to ask any questions now, or you want to add something to the conversation, for example, uh, what are your anchors of joy? Or uh, if you have a question for Oksandra, we can uh, take the time now also. Let's see who asks me the first time, how do I do it all? <laughs> That's a bonus. <laughs> we we, we got to get a big mug for that person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because uh, maybe not all know that I have four kids and a husband <laughs> and a dog uh, and, and two, uh, what are they called? Arich. I don't know how they're mm. called. Hedgehogs. Hedgehogs. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, and also some, some really, really uh, um, interesting and beautiful projects. Um, We've mentioned maybe some of them in, in your description, uh, the School of Trust that you initiated recently. Um, if you want maybe to share a few words about this until people get the courage or inspiration to ask you a question. Da, super. Um, I've got a question. Yes, Luna. Or Alba Luna. No, but I can wait. Yeah, go ahead. And then I can say. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, no, I was just wondering, when you said that you don't feel your age, um, does it have to hurt? Because I don't feel my age and I've never felt that way. And it doesn't hurt because I don't recognize myself in uh, people that surround me that are my age. I always, I don't know. Uh, no, it, it's just in my case. Um, so I think we need to look at... Um, what's helping and what's not helping us. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so it yeah. wasn't helping me uh, to mm. be in certain situations emotionally at 17. Because, I, I get it. you know, and I was stuck in that moment in time in my past. So it wasn't helping me to be what I could have been in relation, in adult relationships and in the relationships with my kids. So sometimes I was reacting like a 17-year-old teenager. <laughs> okay, I see now. But yeah, uh, we were discussing that in the small group. Like, does limina have to be like a state where you are stuck? Or I mean, uh, like you are going to move to another way or you just feel uh, in between those spaces and that's okay. You are, maybe you won't progress and, uh, and that's okay because you are aware of it. Uh, I think being in a limit liminal state is great <laughs> we all need and i think we're not giving enough time for transitioning mm. i think it's the other way around i think we're just um ignoring it yeah like we just feel that going from a job to another is mm. fuck fuck uh, within whatever days uh, we have um, available so i think uh, we need to be more aware and give ourselves more time uh, and to be okay with it. It's not something you can put um, a time on. Hmm. Okay, I want to be in, trans in liminal state for the next seven days and that's done. 
<laughs> no, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't work like that. We and wish. I think, yeah. And I think it's um with uh all uh I mean there are different states and sometimes they can overlap, which is again absolutely normal. Life is not black and white and it's not clear cut. Like I can be in a transition state with work or as a mom, because I'm a new mom, uh, but at work, I'm not. See what I mean? It can be yeah. in different roles, different moments, um, or that's at least what I understand um, from it. Mulțumesc. Cu drag. Thank you, Alpa. Um... And this reminds me, uh, for example, in uh, when when the, the local chapter uh, chose this this concept of uh, liminal, um, they also used uh, the words of an anthropologist, um, and uh, she was uh, saying that we should look around rather than ahead in a liminal state. Um, do you agree with this uh, concept? I think, yes, we need to look around uh, and see. And liminal is a state for me of crisis as well. Um, so in crisis, you see who are the people around you that you can count on um, and who are truly going to be there through hardship. Um, so I think, yes, we need to look around. <laughs> and that's a moment in time in which we can see who truly is there when it's hard. Because, uh, you know, when we are joyful and everything is fun and a lot of people want to be around you. Uh, but when you're crying and when you're desperate and when it's hard, uh, who's there? So, yes, I think we need to look around uh, and also look in our past. Um, and I see, and I'll link it to Stefania's question. Do you think that each individual goes eventually through a liminal phase? Yes, we do, uh, through many. So through child development, there are many phases. Seven-year-olds, um, it's uh, identity um, formation. When you're a teenager, it's a huge uh, transition in terms of autonomy, identity, and relationships. Then it's college years for autonomy. So there are many uh, emotional and mental uh, phases that we're not aware of or that we don't uh, have um, a tradition. So for example, in the US, 16, being 16 is huge, right? And um, there are rituals around it. And they're not rituals of the modern society. We have ritual, they have rituals back in hundreds of years. So I think that's something we need to consider and look at also. How have we transitioned through childhood, adulthood? And how do we want to do it in the future? Because uh, liminal states will be either when we change jobs, change homes, um, change partners, uh, lose dear people. So when dear people will die, all of these are, I feel, uh, states of transitioning for us. I mean, for each of us. Or if a pandemic came. <laughs> yes, so see, I, I think everything that, that's why I think it's not very black and white. Here it begins and here it ends. Or it's just in this role and doesn't overlap with another role that we have. It's more fluid, I feel it. I agree. And do you think, um, I mean, to go through this, should we somehow surrender our certainty and leave ourselves to be vulnerable and open to the mysteries of being, or should we be the other way around? Um, I think rigid rigidity will not help. <laughs> Holy moly, if uh, that would help, I would have told you by now, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rigidity doesn't help at all. Ignoring it doesn't help at all. Wanting to control it doesn't help at all. 
Um, but if you haven't tried uh, uh, mindfulness meditation, that's a way that uh, also anchors me. Uh, and well, I don't do as much sports as my husband would like me to do. But see, building up your internal resources, like doing sports, sleeping well, you don't need, uh, you know all the rest, right? <laughs> um, this also uh, helps, but rigidity, no, <laughs> no. Do we have any other questions from the morning people joining us? Don't be shy. Okay, Adina, you can unmute yourself. Yes. How do you manage your fear about uh, some new beginnings? Because it's a transition part. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adina. That's a very good question. Um, so, <laughs> um, fear is uh, essential for uh, being alive. Okay, without fear, you wouldn't be alive, basically. Um, too much fear, uh, you miss out on life's joys, okay? Um, too little fear, you don't want to be there either. So fear needs to be somewhere uh, where you acknowledge it, meaning you sense it in your body. For It depends where you feel your fear. So feel your fear. Second, uh, treat it like it's your best friend, but you don't need their advice right now. So dear fear, thank you for joining me today. I know you're keeping me alive. I know you want me to be aware of everything that can go wrong. Thank you very much. Right now, I don't need this. So come join me here so I can take my other friend, which might be love for exploration of doing new stuff and let's start. So this is what I do with fear. I acknowledge it um, in my body and I have this discourse. Um, I, can you hear me? I have this internal discourse with fear, uh, like I'm fear is my best friend. Uh, but right now I don't need uh, her advice <laughs> on this uh, important topic, like changing a job. Okay, a silent friend. I'm yes, <laughs> like a silent good friend who wants your best interest, but not in right now because she doesn't have the full picture. Thank I you, Adina. I hope that helped. <laughs> I can also relate to that very much. And I'm sure uh, many people joining us uh, how can relate to, to this. Um, do we have another question? If you, uh, maybe, maybe I can go back to um, talking about a little bit about the projects. Uh, as I see young people, wonderful young people like myself in this call, <laughs> um, because there is something that we're doing in this period of time and uh, maybe you want to get involved. Um, so um, I, am, I am leading Transylvania College in Cluj, um, which is the school um, where my kids study. Um, and it's the school that in the last eight years um, I've helped transform uh, profoundly um, out of uh, pain that I had because my daughter wasn't well uh, in the school. So I think many of you can relate to your parents being called at school, to school, by the teachers to tell your parents what's wrong uh, with you. Uh, I've been the parent called uh, at the school, at the school that I was leading by my colleagues to tell me what's wrong about my child. Um, and that was a crisis moment, a transition moment uh, for my family. 
um, because it ended up that nothing was wrong with this child, just the adults around them or her, uh, including the teachers and the parents who were, if not too busy, uh, too busy. Okay. Um, so with that um, mission, I transformed the school. And then I said that um, if and when you're in a privileged position like myself, uh, meaning having the know-how and the drive and the resources uh, of time and energy, there is something that you need to do with it. Uh, so that's why I started the School of Trust movement, um, which currently in two years time is in 100 state schools in Romania, 50,000 students uh, that have the opportunity to study in schools uh, that will be different for them. So less judgment, less criticism, less punishment, comparison, emotional abuse, you know the deal. Those stuff that <laughs> uh, are the norm for now. Um, and, and that's what drives me uh, a lot um, because I know that in Romania we can be well because we have teachers who want what's best for the kids. They don't know how to do it yet. Um, and what we're doing, and last night uh, I had a meeting with 100 teachers in Romania because um, Giving Tuesday, do you know about Giving Tuesday? Generosity, movement globally, like Creative Mornings, <laughs> uh, but it's around generosity. So Giving Tuesday created this uh, initiative for young people. So I was working with a group, I'm working with a group of young people who have created, and this is where you come along, a challenge, a seven day uh, generosity challenge that anyone in Romania, but also um, somewhere else, I hope you can Google translate the uh, form, can join. So these young people are actually moving us adults towards more generosity. We have um, lots of state schools that will celebrate generosity in December. But what you can do about it is have this uh, challenge for yourselves or friends, or you can share it with others. How does that sound? Sounds really good. I'm putting the link, okay? Because I, I really, want to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> I really want the young people to uh, get the opportunity to have as many people participating. So Giving Tuesday uh, is something you can join automatically. Um, I, I am uh, communicating and promoting it because I really believe in it. <laughs> it's a group of volunteers as well. So, and I'll share the challenge in the chat. Okay, so maybe you join or share it with young people who you feel can do this. It's seven days of generosity, really cool stuff that they can do in December for themselves, friends, and people they don't know. And I, I would point out especially that because we often for, forget or are not aware how important even a small gesture for a person that you don't know can affect exactly. or change their day. Okay, so it's a Google form. There you go. Excellent. And uh, when, when you say uh, young people, I mean, uh, what is the minimum age for people to attend this or? So I asked them this as well. Uh, the, the, they are a group of young people behind this um, generosity movement. I mean, the young generosity movement. Uh, but they, there is a, not a minimum or a maximum age. Last night, uh, I gave this to the Schools of Trust Network, so Școala uh, Crederi. And I saw last night a 57-year-old uh, teacher signed up. So I don't think generosity has an age. And if people want to do this challenge, go for it. And if you want to share it with others, same. That's, that's another quote I would take from this. I love this, uh, generosity doesn't have an age. Yep. That's also so beautifully put. 
and thank you so much for sharing this uh, with us. Um, we still have time uh, for one question if um, anybody wants to, to ask. Those uh, moments of uh, seconds if, of... <laughs> if not, I have another uh, proposition. <laughs> Um, so, uh, a group of, uh, I have a team that, um, and myself, we've started, um, something called spark hybrid international high school. Um, and if you want to mentor a young person, uh, from anywhere around the world and you are anywhere around the world, uh, we are truly looking for young people that can give to other young people and mentor them in terms of their careers or how to do uh, learning differently or any advice that a young person can give to other young persons. So if you're interested, look at Spark School. Um, that's somewhere where you can contribute with your creativity and initiative. And talking uh, about the uh, creativity in the last minutes that we have together, um, if you have uh, uh, an advice uh, for, especially for the creative, highly creative people who are, because with Creative Mornings, we consider that everybody is creative. Um, and uh, my question is for, for those who are professionally highly creative and are going through a liminal uh, space, uh, if you have uh, a, uh, an advice or recommendation in the end for them. Um, I think it's very hard to be creative unless uh, you have lots of self-care. And I think that's, uh, so self-care and self-kindness um, because you need to feel safe to be creative. And how do you feel safe? Because you care for yourself. Um, so... And it's not at the detriment of others. So it's not egoism or it's, no, it's just proper self-care, meaning uh, sleep. So don't be heroic about not sleeping enough and bragging about the uh, minimum numbers of hours that you need, no way. Uh, so self-care uh, is essential for being creative. And I think it's a, responsibility that we each have for ourselves it's hard to do okay but it it takes determination and practice and failing and then determination and practice so self-care and self-kindness i think are gifts and challenges sometimes <laughs> and if we fail at them great Okay, uh, we haven't, I mean, I didn't grow up with self-care and self-kindness. So then it means that it will take me a lifetime uh, of learning how to do it. And it's fine. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alexandra, for um, joining us for this virtual uh, coffee. Uh, if people want to contact uh, you, um, sh uh, should they write you on your Facebook page or website or what would you? Um, so I'm writing a weekly blog uh, around all sorts of things that um, I spoke here as well as other stuff. So ruxandramecha.ro, um, it's gonna be a, the English version as well soon. Um, but they can sign up to the newsletter um, and social media. <laughs> yes, social media platforms, which is Facebook for now, LinkedIn. I'm looking into Instagram and TikTok. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you can also find in the chat, my colleague shared with you uh, the website that she mentioned, but also two links from the two wonderful projects um, that um, we mentioned today. Thank you once more uh, for, uh, for joining us, for offering uh, your time with us. And uh, I don't know, it's, um, I want to wish you a wonderful day. 
uh, I know you're busy and look, nobody asked you, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I said it, so it was pack pack. <laughs> I took it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so thank, thank you, you Stefania, so very much for this time and uh, for everyone that joined uh, on a Friday morning. So thank you. And uh, for the people still with us, um, I want to say that this is the last virtual event for this year. Um, we are hoping and looking forward to see you back in January at least in a hybrid version, we really miss seeing the lovely faces face to face and uh, share a good cup of coffee and, uh, and breakfast. And also I want to mention that we're still uh, current, uh, constantly looking for new partners to join and support uh, this community. So if you have any recommendations or uh, if you want to, uh, to get involved, you can write us to at uh, at creativemornings.com. Um, and this being said, I want to wish you a wonderful day ahead, very productive, take care of yourselves. Uh, as Ruxandra mentioned, it's very important uh, and be kind to yourselves. And uh, yeah, I will leave a nice tune to end uh, the, uh, our event. And thank you once more, Ruxandra. You're welcome. Thank you very much as well. Bye.